When you grow up in a place like Chagrin Falls, Ohio, says world-famous comedian Tim Conway, it's a religious experience in itself. Everyone in the town cares for you, watches out for you. Between Sunday services at the community's two churches, the town folk, like a huge family, involve themselves in each other's lives. Doctors left home each morning to mend hurts, mechanics to fix people's cars, and teachers to grow the minds of children, while little girls hopscotched on chalk-etched sidewalks, and boys balanced bamboo fishing poles as they made their way to the river bank. At age 12, Tim had a paper route, tasted chewing gum from the bottom of a chair, and wished he could own a Red Ryder BB gun. God was a large, mysterious presence in the boy's life. Even though he had no proof that God existed, everybody said he did, and there was no reason to doubt them. Also looming large in the mind of a Chagrin Falls boy was the annual Blossom Festival, highlighted by the biggest parade of the year and the arrival of the carnival. Down by the river, a magical mini village sprung up overnight. A giant Ferris wheel stretched higher than the church tower. The song of the merry-go-round filled the air, and the fragrance of popcorn and axle grease reached his nostrils. Fifty cents jangled in Tim's pocket as he made his way to the midway after Saturday's chores. He liked the feel of turning the dimes in his pocket. After drinking a Coke and buying a ticket for the Ferris wheel, he carefully conducted a survey of the game booths, ascertaining which might secure him the best prize. Then he saw it, a white plastic crucifix that glowed in the dark, hanging on a green ribbon. For some unknown reason, its lure was powerful. A man with long hair and dirty fingernails announced that for a mere 10 cents, Tim could surely win a nice prize, maybe even the one he was eyeing. Grasping the fishing pole, Tim waved the line and hook above the small pool of water where 60 plastic ducks bobbled, some designating a prize, but only one entitling its captor to the crucifix that glowed in the dark. First dime, first try, nothing. Second dime, second try. He hooked a plastic duck, but only a cheap charm was his reward. Third dime, last try. One more worthless item. With each failure, the degree of difficulty became more apparent and the crucifix more desirable. But he was out of money. Tim began walking back home, thinking about how good the cross would have looked glowing in the dark in his room at night. Slumping head down, pondering his plot, Tim wished he could have had it. That instant, he spotted the treasure, a shiny dime, lying on the sidewalk. Reaching down seemed like slow motion. Tim lifted the dime and broke into a trot back to the midway. Again, he surveyed the situation. One chance in 60 to rescue that glow-in-the-dark crucifix. With his hand in his pocket, he rolled the dime in his fingers, just to be sure it was still there. But this was too big a moment. This required big attention. He left the midway. Against the trunk of a maple tree, Tim placed his head on his arm and decided to test the mysterious power of God. Lord, he hesitated, unsure of the proper words to speak to the Almighty. I would really like that white cross. The one on the green ribbon that glows in the dark. Tim turned from the tree and walked firmly to the carnival booth. Now familiar with him, the man with the long hair and dirty fingernails looked down at Tim, slightly raised an eyebrow, and stretched out his grimy palm. The dime emerged from Tim's pocket and was quickly parted from him. The man handed him the pole. Tim furrowed his brow, pursed his lips just enough for the tip of his tongue to stick out, steadied the pole above the water, and with the concentration of a major league pitcher, he dipped the hook and snatched the number one duck from the odds of the impossible, awarding him the glow-in-the-dark white crucifix on the green ribbon. I kept that cross under my pillow until I went to college, says Tim. I still have it. Through many subsequent years, each containing chapters of uncertainty from college exams to casting calls, Tim Conway was always bolstered by the assurance he'd gained that day. 
next to a maple tree at the carnival in Chagrin Falls. A small trinket was his enduring confirmation that he'd had a personal answer to his prayer. A God wink he'd never forget. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next video.